Hey guys, my name is Leisha. I am the owner of 413 Design LLC. I am a local wreath maker here in Indianapolis, Indiana. And today I am gonna show you how to make this fabulous diva. It is really simple and totally customizable. You can make it any way you want, any fabric, any colors, any mesh that you want. You can get jazzy with it and add flowers. It is completely up to you. But now I'm gonna show you what all tools it will need and then I will walk you through step by step. Let's get started. First, here are the materials you're gonna need. I use a self-healing mat, cutting mat, and of course my rotary cutter. This one is the Fiskars. You'll need a pair of scissors. You'll need some pipe cleaners. Now I chose to use green. As you saw in the preview picture, the diva's hair is green. Uh, you really though can use any color of mesh, it doesn't really matter because, or I'm sorry, any color of pipe cleaner because you're not gonna see them, but I just went ahead and used green. These are just full-size pipe cleaners that I took. They do not have to be 100% perfect. I just eyeball it and cut them right in half. Ta-da! All right, in addition to that, you're gonna need your deco mesh. Now, I have made divas where I've used two or three different colors of mesh, but this was just so gorgeous that I felt like it was perfect on its own. As you can see, it is gold and green. Look how beautiful that is. So I figured that this would be perfect by itself and it goes perfectly with the um, fabric that I chose to use. Look at that. Gorgeous. This is just fabric that I purchased last year. Pretty sure I got this at Hobby Lobby. Um, Sometimes I will also use a scarf that I find at just the local um, beauty supply store. These are a bit thinner, so sometimes a little bit easier to work with, uh, but you can also use fabric. And then you'll just cut it down, as you'll see later in the video, to the size that you want. Let's see how pretty that is. Next, you're going to want to pick out your accessories. Now, all of these earrings, uh, I picked up at just the local beauty supply store. So I think for this wreath, we are going to use these. I love the gold theme that we've got going on. It's such a regal color. And then we're going to want something for a necklace. So I'm thinking this here, just to stick with the gold. These are just these little diamond wrap things that I picked up from the Dollar Tree. So we are gonna use these. This will be the necklace. If you can't find the rolls like that, you can also find these in these sheets. It's the adhesive diamond wrap, and you can just cut it down to the thickness that you want and then still just kind of glue it on. All right, you're also going to need some paint. I just pick up this uh, matte acrylic paint. Pretty sure I got this at Walmart for, I don't know, less than a dollar. And then you'll just need a paintbrush. Now, this color here is the uh, chestnut color. You choose whichever color is best for you. Okay, for this Diva wreath, you are also going to need one of these eight inch uh, wreath frames. I picked these up at the dollar store. It's a two pack for a dollar or a dollar 25 now, <laughs> if your store has already switched over. So you'll just need one of these and then you're gonna need your Diva head. Now, I cut these out. I know that you can get them on Etsy. Uh, I've seen them different places where people sell them. I cut my own out. Um, I cannot remember the type of wood, so I will ask my husband and I will put that up here somewhere in the description. Okay, so I cut these out. Um, normally I use a band saw, I think for this one, or no, normally I use a scroll saw. Uh, but for this one, I think I had to use the band saw because I didn't have access to the scroll saw. As you can see, it's pretty thin. Now I've seen a lot of people use um, like foam board for theirs and that's perfectly fine, especially if it's gonna be for indoors. Me personally, I wanna make sure that it lasts. So I like to cut mine out on wood. And as you'll see later, we will attach it 
Okay, are you starting to see? Yeah. So I like to do mine this way, cut it out on wood. Um, at the end, the other thing that I didn't mention, you'll also need like a clear poly coat. I like to put that over um, after I paint it. I like to put a clear coat on top of it just to help seal and protect it um, in case people wanna put theirs outdoors. Okay, so the first thing that I like to do is paint my Diva head. That way I can set it to the side and let it dry while I work on the mesh part. So you can choose, the way that these are cut, you can use either side and have her going whichever direction you want. I am going to use this side though. Um, first of all, it's pretty and so this, uh, the paint is really gonna stick to this really well, or not stick to it, but just give it a really rich color. Um, and this side, it's got a little bit of uh, imperfections here. Not a big deal because when we put our fabric on, it'll cover this, but I don't wanna try to paint over that. And I know that there's this imperfection, not a problem. That's gonna be covered up by her necklace. So I'm gonna use this side. The other thing that I didn't mention, and you'll see here in a minute, we will also need black paint and then pink, purple, red, whatever color you want her lips to be. I'm probably gonna go in with a red but uh, let's get started with our chestnut color. Okay, make sure you shake really well. And then normally what I do is I just dump some on there. And then you're gonna take your paintbrush and you're just gonna paint. Make sure you get all around the edges here. Now around the top of the head, you don't have to worry about that. That's all gonna get covered, but make sure around the bottom part here, you get the edges. And then again, I don't even take the paint all the way up to the top because this is gonna be covered. Okay, so now that we have her all painted and set aside, we are gonna work on the mesh. Once she dries, we'll go back in and do um, paint on her eyebrow and her eyelashes and her lipstick, but we're gonna let her dry and we're gonna work on the mesh. So we are gonna use this mesh, now this is just 10 inch mesh, uh, 10 inch by 30 feet. And I like to cut mine in 10 by 10 squares, and then we're gonna do the spirals. So let's get those cut. Okay, so first of all, I cannot get over how gorgeous this mesh is. Again, it's a green deco mesh but it has gold foil woven through it and it is so pretty. Yes. Okay, so as you saw, maybe you didn't. <laughs> so I cut a total of 14. I like to start with um, seven bundles and I do two in each bundle uh, for this particular type wreath. I like to put seven in each of the sections. Oops, I'm dragging everything with me. Okay, so as you can see on these, there are three sections, one, two, three. One of them I attach to the head, so I only use the other two. And I normally will start with seven bundles in each section. And then if I need more, if I want it to be a little bit more full, then I'll cut a few more. But for now, we're just gonna start with seven. Okay, so we're gonna make the spirals, coils, everybody calls them a little bit different. I'm just gonna call them a spiral. So you're gonna start with your 10 by 10 square. If it is not exactly perfect, I am not gonna lie, I am terrible at cutting straight lines sometimes, even though I have this fabulous map. So if it's not exactly um, straight line or exactly 10 inches, that's okay. This particular type of um, design is very forgiving. So you see how it naturally curls in? We are gonna use that to our advantage. Okay, so turn it upside down. Here in the center, you're just gonna grab and you're really just rolling. You can make it as loose or as tight as you want, okay? Some people will take a clip and put it here. So like you wanna hold that. For me, I just hold onto it in my hand. You're gonna do your other one the same. And sometimes I'll do some a little bit tighter and some a little looser to give it uh, more realistic. I mean, 
when we wear our hair curly, <laughs> or if you curl your hair, sometimes it's going to be looser curls and tighter curls. Our divas are the same. All right, you're going to put your two bundles together. You're going to take a twist tie. That is not a twist tie. <laughs> your pipe cleaner. And you're going to twist it tight, okay? So go ahead, do all your bundles, and then we'll go from there. It is our last one. I say last one, but let's say last one for now. Because <laughs> you never know, we may need to add more, but at least for now, that's our last one. So I have realized that I goofed. I said seven in each, but I only made seven. Oh, good lordy. I think I need some more caffeine. <laughs> well, let's get these seven placed, and then we'll see how many more we need. Sorry about that. I guess I'm just in a silly, goofy mood today. <laughs> see, I've been making these divas for a couple years now, and I still have brain parts. Anyway, okay, so now we're going to work with our eight-inch frame. And so you see here, there are three, one, two, three rows. We are gonna work with the outer two because it's gonna be covered. The bottom half of this is gonna be covered uh, by our fabric. So we're just gonna put these on the outer two, okay? You're gonna do it just like you do when you're doing a regular wreath, okay? You are gonna go here and here on these outer two rungs. And then you want to go really, really tight. And again, you'll see once we start putting our fabric on, it doesn't matter what uh, color um, pipe cleaners you use because they will be hidden. I know it doesn't seem like it now, but promise me, trust the process. So you're going to want to just make sure that you really tighten this on because we do not want these snagging and coming off. And then I normally just get a push down tuck. Okay, so go ahead, get your other ones on, and then I guess we're going to do some more cutting. Let's go. Okay, I got my seven bundles on. Goodness gracious. <laughs> So now we're gonna make some more. Now, because of how full this is, I think we could probably get by with just six more bundles. So I'm gonna cut, just to be on the safe side, I'll cut 14 more pieces, um, but we may end up only using 12, so we'll see. Okay, I got my seven more bundles made, and now we are going to attach them to our frame, just like we did the other one. So it doesn't matter which side you go on, okay? So you'll just fill them in. I went ahead and made seven bundles. We'll see, we might need five, we might need six, seven, I don't know. Uh, so we'll just get those on there, I'll be right back. All right, that is more like it. So I went ahead and did all seven bundles. That way the hair can be really, really thick, okay? And then we will put the head in here. You starting to see it? All right, so now the paint that we used is really quick drying paint, so now we're ready to go in and give her some eyelashes and some eyebrows and some lipstick. Let's go. The one thing that I did do, typically I don't paint the back. However, I did get a little sloppy when I was trying to get my edges and it uh, bled over onto the back, so I went ahead and just did a light tone of paint here on the back. Again, the top half is gonna be covered, so it doesn't really matter. Um, but she is ready. All right, let's do her makeup. Okay, so just like with the rest of this, you can do it any way that you like or that works for you. Um, I am not a makeup artist. I can barely even do my own makeup, so I just do my best. For her eyebrow, I'm just gonna go in with just a plain black. So just a little bit here, you don't need much. And then I just have this brush. Generally, I like one that's a little bit more firm and maybe like an angled tip brush, but I'm working with what I got. 
Okay, so I'm just gonna dip in here. Again, there's no right or wrong. It can be thick, it can be thin. I don't know, I have super thin eyebrows myself. <laughs> Almost non-existent. But we're just gonna give her just a brow. Now most of this ends up being covered up anyway. But it's nice to have that little like peekaboo above the, uh, or under the fabric. So we're just gonna shape her out here. Okay, something like that. Okay, again, a lot of this is gonna be hidden, but it's that peekaboo that's there. So it doesn't have to be perfect, but it'll be fabulous. All right, now, I also like to fill in the eyelashes just to really set it apart. Just like when we put mascara on. But I like to give it a little razzle dazzle. <laughs> so this is an extreme glitter acrylic paint. And what I do, as you can see, I put way too much black here, but that's okay. So I just add this to it. gonna do this. It's apparently, oh geez, a little dry. <laughs> um, so we're gonna pretend like that much didn't just come out. <laughs> All right, we're gonna mix it up here. And I will just probably end up putting this in a different container or something just to kind of uh, not be so wasteful. I definitely did not mean for that. Alternatively, or alternately, sometimes I'll just paint the black on and then paint this on top of it. Probably should have done that. All right, so now I am just going to do her eyelashes. Oops. This is why I like to have a more structured brush because it makes it a little easier. We make work what we have, and then I do this here. Like I said, just like we're doing mascara. <laughs> okay, so when that dries, I know it's kind of hard to see right now, but when it dries, oh, you can see the, the glitter effect there. You know what, let's go over her eyebrows too. Because you can never have too much sparkle, right? Bye -bye. Look at that. She's fabulous. Next, we're gonna do her lips. So since the mesh, or I'm sorry, the fabric that we're using has like a burgundy, deep red undertone, splashes of color in it, I'm gonna go in with a red lip. Sometimes I'll do pink, sometimes I'll do purple, sometimes I'll mix colors. But today we're just gonna go in with just a red. Again, this is where I really like to have a more structured paintbrush just to make clean lines. I just don't have that today. So we're gonna make it work. So this time I'm just gonna dip right in here. That's an air bubble. <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna go right in with my brush here. And then I'm gonna kinda do an outline, just like when you use a liner or pencil on your lip. Again, remember I said I'm not very good with makeup, so <laughs> I don't know the actual terms. Okay, but I'm just gonna go in. I like to do kind of like this kind of thing. Give her like this kind of shape. And then we'll fill in. So you're thinking about it from, this is a side profile of a lady. So this would be, you know, the side of the lips. Pretty. And then same thing. I like to think about if somebody is looking at this wreath from different angles, what are they going to see? So if I'm looking at it from the side, it's hanging on the door and I'm looking at it from the side, I want you to be able to see all the little details which includes like the lip. If you were looking at somebody face on, you would see their mascara, you would see their um, 
you know, their lip gloss or their lipstick. So I try to put those details into my wreath. And sometimes I'll go in with a sparkle, but since we did sparkle up here and our uh, mesh is very sparkly, I think I'm just gonna give her just a plain red lip. Mm, fabulous. All right, so what we're gonna do now, we are going to let her completely dry, okay? And then when we come back, we will attach the earring, we will attach the mesh, and all her jewelry, and her fabric, and she will be good to go. Now it's time for the fun part where we get to use our crafting tools. So this is my hot glue gun that I use. It's very gunky because I don't clean it, but whatever. So this is the Shore Bonder Dual Tint. Um, I absolutely love this one. Dual temp, you can do high or low heat. Um, so it's just whatever you need for your project. And then I use um, a combination of hot glue sticks. So first of all, I get the long ones because there is nothing more frustrating to me than when I'm like knee deep in a project where I'm using my hot glue gun and then my stick runs out and I have to change it. So I like the longer ones. I use two different kinds. I use the Shore Bonder hot glue sticks, and then I also use the Gorilla hot glue sticks. Both of them work really well. I haven't had any issues. Um, I will sometimes make a wreath using a lot of glue, um, a hot glue, and put it on my front door. My front door faces the sun um, and is a metal door, so my door gets extremely hot and I haven't had any issues with anything melting or coming off. Um, so those are my two favorite kind, the Shore Bonder and the Gorilla Hot Glue. Okay, so we're just gonna put this in here. I'm gonna turn this on. I'm also gonna show you this really cool thing that my husband made. So I had bought a hot glue stand. I think it was the Shore Bonder brand and I really just did not like it. So my husband 3D printed me this handy dandy little thing and it works awesome. See, I'm just stick my hot glue in, or my hot glue gun in here. This little tray down here will pick any of the uh, little drippings up. So it works great. So I'm gonna let this heat up and then we are gonna get her dazzled up. Another tool that I forgot to mention that you'll need um, would be some wire snips or wire cutters. Now I have a pair that are like super heavy duty. I have no idea where they are right now. Uh, my craft room looks like it exploded. So everything is kind of everywhere. So I'm just using these. These are Pittsburgh, I'm not sure. I'm sure my husband probably got these at, um, I don't know, somewhere. <laughs> so I'm just gonna use these. And what we need them for, so these are, this earring that we're gonna use is a pierced post has a post on it, and I don't want that on there. I guess technically you could drill a hole and put it through, but for me, I just like to snip this part off. And now we're working with a pretty flat back surface. And then this will be what we'll glue on to the side of our Diva. All right, the hot glue gun is ready. So now we're going to attach her earring first, just like uh, on our own bodies. If you think about it, if you follow the bottom part of your nose to the side where your ear is, that is about where your ear is gonna be pierced. We're gonna do the same thing for her. So we are gonna place this here. Now, the top part of this, this little sparkly part, it is going to be covered by the spark that we're putting on or by the fabric. Um, which is perfectly fine because nobody really wants to see a big giant blob of um, the hot glue. So this top part will get covered, but then she'll still have this beautiful earring here that dangles down. Okay, so what I like to do whoops, is where I want to put it, I just put, anyway, I just put a big blob here. 
so we don't want anything coming off of our wreath. <laughs> we only do high quality stuff around here. All right, and then you are gonna push that in there and be careful because obviously hot glue is hot. <laughs> so you're gonna push that down in there and then sometimes I'll add just a little bit more on top just to seal it really well. Okay, so we're gonna let that harden and then we are going to put her necklace on. So our hot glue is not all the way hardened, but obviously it's hard enough that I can touch it and it doesn't hurt. That is not going anywhere, okay? So that is awesome. And then again, it'll be covered up. Um, you know, we'll bring our fabric around and up like this. Uh, so it will also be double secure. So now we want to attach our beautiful little necklace here. See how pretty that looks? So I just like to turn it over and measure how much I need. I always overlap just a little bit. And then you're just going to cut it. Okay. So then I'm going to add a little bit of glue and push this down. Okay. goes a long way and again you have to be very careful because it is hot. Go figure hot glue being hot. And then you see what's going to go just like that. We're going to bring her around, put more here. Gonna harden and it won't be quite as clear, but it's enough that um, you won't really be able to see the hot glue. It just looks like it is attached in the back here. And then once it fully dries, I get all my little strings off. There you, go. you can put a dangly one if you want, or a little pendant on it, or something, but I think that this is just pretty as is. So you see, she's starting to come together. Now it's time to attach the hair. So you remember we made this earlier. We used our eight inch round metal frame from Dollar Tree. This is the back. But remember this is going to be covered. We're not gonna see any of this. But we've got our eight inch round. We did seven bundles in each. So there's a total of three sections on this. We use two sections, we put seven bundles in each, and each bundle has two uh, little spirals in it. Okay, and this third one here that we have open, this is what we are gonna attach onto the wooden head. Now, total transparency moment. Normally when I cut these heads out, um, they are a little bit wider uh, so that they'll fit really snug in here. My lady here, she just has a small head, <laughs> um, which tells me I probably either cut it smaller or um, sanded it a little bit smaller, but no biggie deal. Okay, so I like to kind of hook it in like this and like this so that it's nice and snug. So I guess doing it that way, it's pretty snug. And then you're just going to move it around to exactly where you want it. Sometimes you gotta wrestle with it. <laughs> so I think that's pretty good. But I also, even though like more than likely that's not going anywhere. to secure this down okay so this is where I get out my good old rusty trusty glue gun and I am going to I'm going to the heat a bit on that. okay we're gonna glue put a strip of glue under you see that there I'm going under because 
we are going to push this frame down. No. All right. We are just going to push this down and pray for our fingers. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to hold this down. So our first side is dry. It is not pretty, but that's okay because you are not going to see it. So now we're going to turn it over. We're going to do the same thing to the back. Now that our hot glue is dry, it is time to prep our fabric. Now, as I said before, sometimes I will get a scarf, you know, it's in the shape of a big square, and I will cut it in half, uh, but this time I just happened to get fabric. Um, like I said, I think I got this at Hobby Lobby last year, um, maybe Joann's, I'm not sure, but I got it last year and just thought it was gorgeous. Pretty sure I got just one yard. So what we're going to do, as you can see, it's folded here in half. I'll show you. Okay, so it's folded here in half. I'm just gonna go ahead and cut right down this line here. Um, and we're just gonna work with half of this. It's probably a little bit more than what we need, but because this fabric is a thicker fabric, it's gonna be a little bit harder to manipulate. So I would rather have more and cut off the excess if needed um, than to have less than what we need. So let's go ahead and cut right on down this line and then we'll be ready to attach it. Okay, we have our two halves, and remember what I said that I'm not the greatest at cutting a straight line? As you can see, <laughs> that is the case. So we are gonna put half of this away for another project. And we are just going to work with this half, okay? Now, yeah, this is the inside, although it's really pretty. I mean, you could use this side as well. But I like this side because it has the shimmer. So this is the side that we're going to work with. Uh, it doesn't look like there is a particular like up or down. So we are just going to lay this out here. Okay, so the side that we don't want to see is the side that's going to be up. Again, this is likely more fabric than what we need, but I want to start with more and then we can cut down because obviously if you need more and you had already cut it, you're kind of out of luck. Uh, kind of like when you're cooking, you can always add more, but you can't take away once you've put it in. So it's that same kind of thing. Oh my goodness, look how gorgeous. Oh, can you guys see it? It's gonna be beautiful. Okay, so now we might work with, I might fold this down here too even though we're not going to see that top line, but that's okay. So what I do is I like to make sure that out the right side, I've got plenty of extra fabric. The idea here is we are going to wrap the fabric here. Remember I said we're not gonna see our zip ties? That's because we're gonna wrap this. And then I just add some hot glue. But first we're gonna need to add a little uh, loop here so that it can be hung. But I'm just showing you what we're doing. So that will get wrapped. So we have to make sure that we have enough fabric around the back for that to be wrapped around the ring. And then this left side here is what will get brought around to up here. Okay, now remember I said we're not going to see this. That's because we are going to glue like this, okay, to make that beautiful shape. She's gonna have the little earring peekabooed out. And then we'll do some sort of like tied knot or something here and the hair will stick out the top. I know that sounds like a lot, and does it make sense? But it will, trust me. Um, so let's get, before we put this on, let's go ahead and add a little loop on the back. You can use a zip tie, you can use um, a pipe cleaner. Uh, I'm gonna try to see, I think I've got some little um, like twine. I think that's what we're gonna use. So let me see what I can find. 
So I found my roll of twine. It is really heavy duty. And um, so I am just going to make a loop and tie some on the back. So for our loop on the back, our little hanger, I'm just gonna cut some of the twine. I'm gonna tie a knot. And then we wanna make sure that this knight, this, this knot is very taut. <laughs> so I will use some needle nose pliers and just pull. And this is just gonna make sure that our knot is really, really tight. So that it doesn't come loose. And then I'll just snip some of this excess off. Okay, so now we have our hanging loop. What we're gonna do find where our top center is, which obviously is at the top center. And then I am going to hook this through and we are going to pull through. And then uh, sometimes I would put a little dab of hot glue there. I'm not really too worried. Well, yeah, let's go ahead and do that. I'm not too worried because we are going to be gluing um, fabric around, but let's just go ahead for just a little little added security just a tiny little of glue. So once that dries, we're gonna go ahead and add our fabric, and then that's it. Our diva will be divified. Okay, so let's attach this gorgeous fabric. So I like to start by attaching my front, then go around and attach the back around the ring. Um, I did take the bottom half of this and just fold it under. That way we have a nice, um, nice cut down here, a nice line, I guess you could say. Um, that way we're not seeing the cut edges. Okay, so then what I'm gonna do, and some of this hair is gonna be covered by the um, fabric, and that is perfectly fine. That'll give that dimension, uh, just as if we had a scarf around our hair. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I like to bring a line of glue right up where I want my fabric to go, okay? And so we're going kind of at a di diagonal. Remember I said some of our eyebrow is gonna be covered, this is gonna be covered. So I'm just gonna bring this line doo -doo -doo, right up like that, okay? Move our twine here. All right, grab your hot glue gun. I like to do a little bit on the edge here too. Okay, and then we are gonna bring our line of hot glue right up here, right where I want my fabric to go, okay? I'm gonna put a little here, because remember we're covering that. Gotta roll up my sleeves for this one. <laughs> okay, and then you are gonna bring your fabric and right here on the edge, you are just going to follow your hot glue line. And if you add, sometimes I'll kind of like fluff pieces see, like this. I just feel like it gives it a more realistic kind of vibe. Cause I know like if I'm wearing a pretty decorative scarf, I might scallop it or, you know, it's not gonna be completely straight. So I love that this gives it a little bit of dimension. Okay, and then we are just pressing down here on our hot glue to make sure that our fabric is really sticking to it. Like we said before, we don't want anything coming up. We want it to be really good and, and on there. Look at how pretty that is already. You guys, I'm so excited. This is literally the last step uh, once we get this all on and it's gonna be gorgeous. Yay, so pretty. All right, so next what we'll do, I wanna make sure that this is good and dry. We're gonna flip it over and we're gonna do the top part, okay? And then, uh, or we'll do around the, the ring as we talked about before, okay? And then as you can see, we're gonna bring, you know, our fabric here. We're gonna tie her a pretty knot. Let's see. See if I can give you kind of a, a visual. See, she'll have a pretty knot up there. 
and then we'll finish um, finish it. So let's do the back. For the back, what I'm going to do is I like to add a little bit of hot glue kind of across here and then fold it and pinch. Okay, we're going to fold and pinch. We're going to do this all the way around. What that does is that covers all of our work, okay, all of those pipe cleaners. And all you see from the back is just the beautiful fabric and your beautiful mesh. Okay, and we'll go in all of these little frays. We'll clip all of these. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that part. So we're just gonna go all around and I'm gonna take it to, yeah, right where it ends here. All right, so let's do that. Now we need to do the back the same way that we did the front. Remember we ran a line of hot glue in the direction that we wanted it to go and that will help us to cover all this up. Okay, so I'm gonna run a line of glue here, whatever shape you want. So I'll probably do something like that. And then we will do the same thing. If you wanna give it some shape or some bunching, you are welcome to do that. And then we'll let that dry and she'll be ready to tie the knot. So we're ready for our final step, which is bringing the fabric around and doing our knot up here. So sometimes this part is really tricky because we're working with a ton of fabric. And I was just thinking, I wish I had a rubber band because <laughs> then I could like tie the rubber band or, you know, to bring the two pieces together. But I think what I'm gonna do, and I'll be really honest with you, this is the part that I have to play around with it a lot. This is a lot of like adjusting, tying, untying, and just seeing kind of what works, what looks best. So let's try with just tying to start with and seeing if that gives us what we want. And then if so, we can kind of wrap it to give it a tied knot look. And the cool thing about this is at this point, this is where every diva starts to bring on their own personality, their own shape. Everyone is a little bit different. I don't think I've done two divas who, that are exactly the same, to have the same shape or anything like that. So I kind of like this. I'm kind of thinking, what if I did some sort of like, do it as a bow. Maybe that would be pretty. I am going to zoom through this part while I'm trying to figure out what exactly it is I want to do. And you can come along the journey with me. While we're waiting for the last bit of all of the hot glue to just harden, this is a great time to go through and kind of snip all of your little stragglers, the little frays. Um, and I'm gonna do another video that talks about like mesh and like a Q&A type thing. Just know that fraying is normal. <laughs> it's gonna happen. Now, as you can see, I don't have a whole lot of fray. I use a higher quality mesh. Uh, I think that mixed with a very sharp rotary cutting tool makes all the difference in the world. All right, and guess what? Our diva is done. She is divified, divalicious, and she is finished. So gorgeous. See, it wasn't that hard to do. Um, it's pretty simple. There we go. All right, she is all done. Gorgeous. I love it, absolutely love how she turned out. She is regal, she is fabulous. Now, I said she was done, I lied. There's one last step. We need to do our clear poly coat spray. That'll bring out some of the, give her a little sheen here in her face. 
Um, and then I also spray it on the material too, so let's do that. So this is the uh, polyurethane that I use. It's uh, a Verithane brand. Um, urethane, as you can see, this is a water-based exterior. Obviously, you can use it on projects that are for interior too, but it's just that extra oomph <laughs> to uh, make it just stronger. Um, I like that it has the superior UV protection. Anytime you have a wreath that's going to be in the sun, uh, it's going to fade. You know, anything will fade in the sun, but I do like having a good UV protection because it helps to slow that down a little bit um, and then seals water out. Now, most of my uh, customers that have purchased the Divas, they are for indoor use, but there's no reason why it couldn't be for outdoors. It may not hold up as well, um, but it could be. So our garage is a bit of a hot mess right now. It's a typical guy workshop, so I am not gonna take you out there. So I'm gonna spray her down, uh, the front and the back, and then we'll come back and we'll see the fin uh, finished product. Here is the finish. So we're gonna go right in again so you can see that gorgeous, gorgeous deco mesh. You probably hear my dog in the background. <laughs> we went with a little knot detail here with the fabric. Now remember, this is just fabric that I bought from um, the store. And I love, see when you're looking at her right on, you may not see all the detail, but when you come around, gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. It's the details that matter. She is beautiful. Thank you so much for going on this diva journey with me. Comment below, let me know what you think and what kind of wreath you would like to learn how to do next. Thanks guys, bye.